Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Um, sorry that we had to get this one short because my uh, co-conspirator here was just so tuckered out from all today's back MacBook Pro news. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Will Greenwald. What up? The word Octopath, word Octopath, has eight letters in it. It's almost as good a word as Snorlax. The word Traveler has eight letters in it. You're I just right. realized that right now looking at the yeah. logo for Octopath Traveler. Do you want to blow your mind? Sure. The first letter of the eight characters in the game spell out Octopath. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I knew that before even they said all the Travelers. Like the People were just like, oh, it's going to be, yeah. Octopath Traveler is game we're playing today on Facebook and Twitch for you.com. I'm Jordan Miner. Uh, it's, the hot, it's one of today's <coughs> hot new, taught new, two hot new Nintendo Switch games. Yep. Uh, Octopath Traveler and Captain Toad, we have coverage of. On the site. You Captain's, wrote them both up? Yeah, Captain Toad's, um, it's a Wii U game, though. Like, you know, a lot of people already played it. I already played it. Um, whereas Octopath Traveler is this brand new, uh, full-fledged, epic, uh, you know, Japanese RPG that a lot of people are really excited about. Yep. So It is, I think, it. from the same uh, directors as Bravely Default. It's definitely kind of in that style. It feels super like Bravely Default. Yeah, I mean, all the yeah. tracing back to Final Fantasy Four Heroes of Light and that it was like throwback to pre-7 a.k.a. the good Final Fantasies. Yeah. But uh, first, we should probably talk about other brand new stuff, like mm -hmm. this Snorlax Kigurumi from Think Geek. And we'll have a post about it sometime next week, maybe because we're also checking out San Diego Comic Con. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff there. Mm -hmm. But this might be a geek peak in the near future. Geek pick. Geek One peak of is our mountain range that we're uh, buying up. <laughs> we, need a ca we need a volcano lair. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, this is like 50 bucks, and it's super comfortable. I was saying off stream, this has to, this can't. You're saying off stream that this upsets you. <laughs> I was saying that too, but I was also saying that this can't look the way it looks, but then be uncomfortable. Yeah. It has to be one or the other. Wait, but it's also like, it's not neutral comfort, because you can be wear clothing and it's fine. Yeah. But then you like get into like, like Zubas, and it's like, this is comfortable. Yeah. So it's and let me tell you, buddy, Zubas are comfortable. Buddy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we also have the uh, latest loot gaming box with a... Uh, the theme is, I think, grub or dig if something food related, and the poster is the, it's the same Skyrim art as has for the last what seven years. People are there are new Skyrim players being born every day. I just beat it for the first time earlier this year. I'm so. because it came to the Switch. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much it. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Elder Scrolls Six Skyrim. Yeah, in seven more years from now. But let's all look at the stuff on it first. This neat uh, pin. I'll try to get this off. Is this coming through clearly on the focus? It's meat. It's meat? It's meat, yeah. Oh, it's like Castlevania wall chicken. Speaking of which, let's talk about this t-shirt. This uh, t -shirt. I didn't even mean to set you up like that. <laughs> Uncle oh, Greg. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I really <laughs> did not mean to set you up like that. <laughs> this is a real good shirt. Okay, huh, famous Smash Brothers, Simon Belmont. Simon Smashes. Yeah. We got some Halo cookie cutters. Uh, Wait, what, okay, what are, what are the iconic Halo shapes? They're, uh, rifle. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Pistol. Okay. Helmet. Yeah. And I don't know what this thing is. Is it like the, is it the Guilty Spark Is thing? it Halo? I, no, it, is it is Master Chief's Helmet? No, this one's Master Chief's is it, Helmet. Is it the library? <laughs> like, is it the Guilty Spark thing of it's like the floating, the glowy ball? Is it Keith David? I wish. Uh, Dude. Let me tell you how much I would spend on a Keith David cookie cutter. I'm thinking, it wasn't the, what's the level? The library that's all the different, um, everyone hates it because there's so many different hallways and stuff. Yeah. Do you think I know Halo? I don't <laughs> know. Pete, do you know Halo? Yeah. yeah. Does that look like the layout for that, maybe? Being okay, eh, whatever. And, uh, if you care about a Halo cookie cutter, you'll know what that is. Hopefully this is more uh, working as intended than the Infinity Gauntlet oven mitt, which they had to recall because it didn't actually work as an oven mitt and was highly flammable. Right. But <laughs> this is a Skyrim apron. Check this out. Does it, okay. Does, does, it, does this upset you more than just the Kigurumi? I like that it, it, um, it doesn't protect your knees. I have nothing else. There are no, more, there are no Skyrim bits left, except there's nothing left. Well, that's okay. We can have the same bits later when they, you know, release it on the. Uh, it's already on the Switch. What's the next system that Skyrim's going to be on? I mean, they even made a joke about that already. So even they made that a joke bit, in that they actually that, they actually made the Alexa thing. Yeah, so that's even, the weirdness. Even bits about bits are like done. Anyway, the last thing here is some Bioshock Infinite socks. That game. I don't know what it has to do with food, but I always like a pair of socks. I think it's okay, but it's that's okay. a whole other series of takes. 
it's okay. It could have been better, and the uh, like the the early footage was as much a lie as co uh, Colonial Marines. I think that game is good when you realize that the main character is bad and the game doesn't like him. Oh yeah, that's, if you think that's that the totally game fun. is on the side of that main guy, then yeah. it's awful. I think the game kind of actually really hates him. <laughs> and these are they're that's nice. Very fiery, I know. You know, I yeah. The uh, socks of the different Vigors, or whatever the hell they were called, they were Vigors, right? Uh, yeah. Bioshock's dumb. But I do like the spiritual sequel, uh, you know, Space Shock, Prey. But anyway, uh, thought I had another bit to go with this, but yeah, screw it. Is that, that all that's in your box? You're gonna go back to sleeping, blocking the road for us? Yes. Okay. Unless you have the, unless you have the Poke Whistle. I, I, uh, when I first played Pokemon, I threw away my Master Ball, thinking that toss meant to toss at oh. the creature. And so I just lost that. That's real bad. Yeah. So I was like, eh. But on the bright uh, side, since like the sixth generation or so, there's just so much. Like you can get any Pokemon you want. There are so many like ways to trade or like farm it in like po like post game safari areas and stuff that like you don't have to worry about it anymore. But I, was, I, was, I wasn't thinking about that. I wasn't thinking about IVs or EVs in 1998. Mm -hmm. Yeah, question. So the theme was baking this month? Uh, the theme was Grub or food? Dig in. Dig in. Hopefully. Uh, I, I keep forgetting what it is. Yeah, grub. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the dumb gamer way to talk about food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that checks out. Ugh. I think probably because they've already had like fuel. Fuel. Okay, that's the other one. Yeah. Or they could have called it biofuel. If you have any questions about what you just saw or what you're about to see, hit points. Uh, Octopath Traveler, uh, leave them in the comments and Potion. we'll get to them. Um, are you ready to talk about Octopath Traveler, Will Greenwald? We like, should. Do you have any more nonsense? I do have one more. I am okay. kind of disappointed that there was nothing from like a vanillaware game, like um, Odin you know, Sphere, or Odin Mermasa. Sphere, a Mermasa Dragon's Crown. Is right, the that's the one that's that, yeah. Because if because vanillaware does like like drawn food porn almost as much as Miyazaki does. Vanilla is also a flavor of food. That's true. Yeah. It is thematic. It really makes you think. But anyway, Octopath Traveler. Now, we're playing on your Octopath game. Octopath Traveler, yeah. Because I am like 30 hours in. I'm at the fourth chapter of all eight of the characters, so like I don't want to spoil anything. So we're, we're just like, this is once you've gotten everyone and you can sort of go on with stuff. Right, so here I'm at the, so. It's pretty early. Yeah, we'll just set this up. So the way this game is structured, um, the Octopath, there are the eight different main characters. Yep. Um, and you start off choosing one of them. I've, my, I've chosen first <laughs> uh, Hanit. Um, as you see right here, Hanit, she's a hunter. She speaks in weird, dumb, old-timey English. She speaks like Cyan from Final Fantasy VI. If you know what that means, you'll probably dig this game. You know, thou is and forsooth and putting E on the end of a lot of words. And not to say that that's an obscure reference, like Final Fantasy VI is a big, beloved game. I'm yeah. just really not a JRPG person. I know. Um, which is, I think, important context for when I talk about the things that I like and don't like about this game. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so yeah, so there's eight main characters that you're recruiting um, in sort of the first, like the, like the first kind of chunk of the game, mm -hmm. going across the continent. You're doing the first part of their stories. Um, that's what I've done. I've done the first chapters of all. Yep. Eight characters. I'm now in um, this town to start uh, the second chapter. I don't think this is quite a spoiler. If you go back into the menu, sure. I am like th I'm 30 hours into the game, and that question mark in the menu. If you go oh, go back, that question mark item. I still don't know what it does. Yes, yeah, so this is a it long, is not unlocked yet. It's a long video game, as uh, Japanese role playing games tend to be. Yep. Um, and this is like long for the sprite era type video game. So like, yeah, it's long. Right, but what I appreciate about it is that these, it's made up of these distinct, these like discrete chapters. Yep. You can all beat, you can beat in like, like an hour. Yeah. Uh, so it's very uh, digestible, which is for good for a, a portable system. And yep. also just makes you feel like you're getting something done. You're not just like endlessly eroding away this huge, dumb anime slab. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I really like sort of the writing that the stories it's, te it's telling aren't complex or like super strong. But like the sort of characterizations you have and that just the people you talk to, they actually feel like, oh, they have a story beyond just being a dumb NPC. Yeah, they're like, it's like weirdly mature. Yeah, like uh, there's actual some minor amount of subtext when you get past the tropes. Yeah. Um, so my characters are a little underleveled right now for this part that I'm in that now. So I'm just going to yep. just kind of wander around this sort of connective overworld to try to just, you know, grind a little bit and show off, uh, show off the battle system. So let's, yep. let's see if you, if you run holding the V button, you'll like the, you'll trigger it more often. So, you got sprites, you got a, uh, you know, 3D but spready background. It's, it's very kind of theatrical paper craft. In yeah, fact, it, the special edition has like a little paper craft uh, theater that's based off of um, um, 
primroses. Oh, like the dancing area. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like this kind of like little diorama sort of like war, and like just like the, the lighting, it's like the kind of tilt shift stuff yep. going on. It's really cool looking. Um, so yeah, so the way that battle systems work here is you are trying to break enemy guards, as you'll see the three with the little shield icon. Yep. And you do that by exploiting their weaknesses. Um, so uh, Ulbrich here, he has a sword, and that will those uh, those two what are those praying mantises, those little bug looking guys. Uh, sure. They are, they are weak to sword attacks, so I'm going to attack them. What I'm also going to do is use uh, a boost point, which is that little kind of glowing uh, yellow circle above, like beneath the character's names, um, that you, will allow me to attack twice in a turn. You get a boost point every turn, and you can get up to five boost points and use up to three of them three at once. Three in a single attack, yeah. So you can get like multiple attacks or superpower your uh, special moves, and that adds a lot of... A lot of strategy because you need to balance wearing down their armor points and breaking them down and putting them in a stun state because then they recover their armor right. after you get a free turn. And while also building up your BP so you have enough BP to basically hit them really hard when they're at their weakest. And just knowing what character has what move that can like, you know, yep. since I have Ophelia here, um, I know that, that that gaping maw creature is weak to uh, light based attacks so I'm just going to do one of those and start wearing that down. Yeah. And it's handy to attack all when possible, so like, if you hit a weakness and you don't know the weakness yet, it'll just show the weakness, and then you'd, you'd know that for the game. Right. So that'll just pop up. Or one of the characters, Cyrus, his, um, like one of his character skills is to be able to intuit that out. Yep, and at the first, uh, the first time he, at the beginning of every battle, if you don't know a weakness, he uncovers a weakness of each monster, which is really handy. Yeah, or like covering the hit points of a monster, which, yeah. you, don't, which you don't know. That too. Question. Does the order that you start playing these different characters matter? Uh, so far, I think it only matters in that the first character you choose, that's the one who's in your party period. Yeah, uh, you can't remove it from your party. That's your party leader, and that's, that's the character that's just gonna end up being the, the strongest, because yep. they're just always there leveling up. Um, I went with Cyrus, and like that's a, I think that was a great choice, because he can do three ele different elemental attacks and staff, so that's like four uh, weaknesses he can exploit. And he uh, has that uncover weakness things. So that's like a super handy thing to have in every, uh, everything, in every battle. That's like Hanna, because he can capture monsters like it's Pokemon. Yeah. It's kind of neat. It's pretty good. Do you want to summon a monster on her here? Yeah, let's try it. Um, beast lore. So she has Lind, her like giant cat that yep. you can always use. But also you'll see here these other monsters with numbers. That's how many times I can, I can use them. Because if the, when a uh, monster is weakened, and uh, if their armor is down and the le fewer hit points they have, the more likely Han it is to catch it, or the more likely uh, Teresa is to uh, take money from them with, co with Tressa, the collect the merchant. Tressa, yeah. yeah. Or that uh, Therian is to just steal items. So wearing them down also lets you get stuff, including just capture the monster. I'm gonna need to heal a feeling here in a minute. Yep. Yeah. Because again, you, I'm kind of under level here. But she's also uh, like asleep, so you can't actually use her healing. No, but I can use someone else. I can use an item on her. Yep. As you'll see, I also have like 80 healing items. That's pretty much common. You get like 99 of every first tier thing you can easily afford, then just get more as you play. It's, it's so old school, like yeah, turn based RPGs. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now, did you play off? Um, did you play Bravely Default? No, I didn't. The battle system here is very, very similar, uh, specifically the BP. The whole like boost uh, points, it, was, it wasn't it was quite the same in Bravely Default or Bravely Second, but you could still do like the, the boost slash use several skills at once and sort of basically spend them between turns. And it was it added this great strategy. You feel how much how it makes things more interesting and tactical than yeah. just moving turn by turn. Because sometimes you want to like save your BP for like, oh, if I can just like whittle down their shield and then use it all for like a huge attack at once. Yeah. It's like, there's a lot of tact, it's very tactical. Yep. Um, for a game that's even just like not like an actual strategy RPG. And uh, you can actually get more skills as you play. You get skill points in addition to XP. And the more skills you unlock, uh, you can also get passive skills, which have their own bonuses, but then when you get all the skills for a given character, you get a special move that you can only use when you're fully boosted. Like Ulbrich Fully boosted? Like Ulbrich has this like really powerful sword attack, but it's like 30 SP, and you need to use 3 BP to use it. So I took a risk there with uh, Alfin, uh, just trying to guess what else this thing might be vulnerable to, and I yep. found out that he's vulnerable to ice, so that's good. That's helpful. Yeah. See if Axe happens. 
<laughs> and of course on the top you have the handy turn bar so you know what, like, you know the order of characters. And it is based on speed, it isn't purely just, you know, everyone goes in a straight line. It, you speed and priority changes, yeah. which adds to tactics. It's kind of like Final Fantasy X. Okay, let's hope this takes it out. So I'm fully boosted with light magic, which the thing's weak to. It's also shields are down. Mm -hmm. I did like a lot there, but not yeah. enough. Yeah, but it's stunned, so you can follow up with attacks. Yeah. And I, I'll just do her, I'll do another one of those. You okay. still have a point you can boost too. Just use Holy Light. Yeah, right. yeah now it's going. Yeah. It just feels really good to just press the trigger, like it's uh, the top bumper for boost. So just like press like three of those, like yeah. I've been oh, playing this a lot for the last week or two. Uh, on the subway a lot, at home. Uh, yeah, the Joy-Cons, Joy-Cons are great for RPGs. You know, the, you don't need the pro controller for right. it, but it does make gaming feel nice. Yeah. Uh, question. I also want to save. So when I played the demo, I noticed that so every is this character. This from you, Pete. Hawk? This is me. Pete. Yes. Okay. Um, I noticed that every character seems to have like an out of combat skill. Yep. Funny you should mention that. I'm going to show that off next. Yep. So um, let's travel back here to um, my starting area, Hanit's place. Uh, this Swarky. This this, this it looks so much like Swahili. It's very weird to see like a a place and people with a lot, like a lot of character names that have apostrophes in them, and then to go with the the medieval like the uh, Elizabethan ye old like talking. It's such a weird dichotomy. Yeah, it's just I just love how this game looks. Like just yeah, look it at looks that. great. Yeah. So yeah, so each character has a path action, which is a kind of little gimmick they have um, that applies to combat. But I found is mostly for like overworld, almost like side quest type stuff. Yep. Um, so I looked up the solution to the side quest that we're going to do right now. Um, all right, no, not that guy. So you can talk to these characters, and uh, the white bubbles mean you can interact with them, and the brown ones mean that they have a side quest or uh, just a, a problem to solve. Right. Which gives you, uh, you can get good money out of it, you get some items, it's nice. And when you hit Y, instead of A to talk to them, you can bring up these four class skills based on whoever's in your party. Right, so this guy's looking for information about monsters or something, mm -hmm. and I now, because I looked it up, I know I have to, um, I have to talk to this guy, this old storyteller in town, and get the information from him. Because I have Alf in my party, whose uh, path action is inquire. Um, I can inquire from this guy. To get Tale of the Beast Tamers. And with that information, I can bring that back to um, the quest giver, mm -hmm. and I'll be the end of the side quest. Yeah, the side quests aren't really um, complicated. Like they, they're, they're a bit opaque. Like you just sort of run, run across yeah. the items or information or just connections you need to get to fulfill them. But they're, they're not very deep or complex. Yeah. But some of them have more um, multiple like, steps. Or some. Um, yeah. I was gonna say some of the path actions have more like combat right. um, effectiveness. That's true. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, you hunt it and you can provoke. So. If uh, someone's standing in a door, you can actually provoke them, and if you beat them, they get sort of knocked out and just lay next to the door so you can go to wherever they're protecting. It's really dumb. Right. Or if you have Primrose, who's like an like a exotic <clears throat> dancer, she can allure people, so yep. it's like having a fifth party member, or like sort of like a... And Octavia can do the same thing with God. Yeah, so there are really like four path actions, and then out of the eight characters, they just kind of have a variant on that. Yep. Like, because Hanna and Ulbricks is the same. Um, Therian and, and uh, Tressa. Uh, uh, pretty much the same, yeah. Uh, Therian's great. I mean, every time I go to a new town, I rob everyone. <laughs> right. But also, that means that you have, you can mix up, it gives you a little more freedom in how you mix up your party yep. while still having access to all the types of paths. Uh, and there's actually kind of a reputation system, too. So if you provoke a character or uh, challenge them... Let's pick a fight! Uh, and you lose, you actually, like, take... You, you lose reputation in town. And if you basically fail enough path actions in town, your reputation becomes tarnished and you need to pay an occasionally hefty sum to the bartender to restore your reputation by spreading good rumors about you. Oh, so it's going to be a little long one fight right here. And yeah, actually the... Uh, That's it, you're that done! It. <laughs> wow. Uh, the provoke and challenges are uh, you're only fighting with Hunted or Ulbarek. I want to earn like one experience point. Yeah, well you're in her starting area and you're level 21. Yeah, yeah I know. That was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's taking a little bit nap. <clears throat> but really, it's the main, it's the chapter sort of stories that have the most beef to them, because they do have kind of have the same formula for each one. You go to a town where something is happening, so you can see the icons there. Ulbricht's next chapter story is up in uh, that part of the map. Yep. You go into town, 
you get a cutscene with that character. You sort of walk around and just get information, go to waypoints, occasionally use their path action, and it unlocks a uh, sort of a dungeony area. You fight through that, you fight a boss, then you beat the uh, the chapter. Let's try out this chapter, for the second Ophelia chapter. Again, I'm a bit underleveled, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna swap out my party here too because I don't have all my strongest people in my party right now. Yep. Uh, where is the in? And I'm at a oh, question. Yep. Is it just the one character that has a giant beast companion? Uh, yeah, that's Hanit. Yep, that's her thing. That's not the end. Where am I? I'm looking for. Oh. It is. Uh, I have to say, I'm like at chapter four for all my characters right now, and uh, for most of them. Oh, that's the last. That's the last chapter, I believe. Maybe. I think but each I'm, character is four chapters. It's it. You'd think that, but it is. Uh, you know, Octopath, so it might have just eight of something and. You know, I'm wondering if I, I'm waiting for a turn because again, that menu item isn't hasn't changed yet, and I'm just wondering if there's going to be a thing that happens that doubles the game, kind of like Bravely Default and Bravely Second did. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, hopefully, less repetitive, but in terms of rep repetition, the ways these stories go is repetitive. That's why I, I haven't finished it yet, and that's why I'm playing very slowly because, yep. like, I don't want to if I just. Played a bunch of these, I just get burnt out. But it's just so easy to do. I've been playing a bunch, and I still haven't gotten you know far enough for me for me to really think that I know the game. Yeah, and you're more of a JRPG person than I am. Oh yeah. Um, where I'm having <laughs> where's like the, the the tavern? Yeah. Am I just dumb? Try crossing the bridge. Okay. There's more stuff to the left. Yeah, because I haven't been in this town yet. So like this this is really funny slash stupid. Yeah. Uh, that guy who's on the bridge. I'm gonna go back to the other place and just get easy in there. That guy who's on the bridge is sort of staring at the river is like his side quest is, the river's higher than it was, I'm worried. And <laughs> that's- Big, big mood. <laughs> yeah. And like, if you go to a little zone later, uh, like further south, who's down river, you meet a researcher who, if you inquire or uh, uh, do Cyrus's uh, action, uh, scrutinize, scrutinize that's, yeah. uh, you get information that, oh, the, the ice is thawing sooner this year. So it puts him at ease and he gives you stuff. <laughs> Oh, these are actually these actually are the strongest characters in my party. We got a question. Do any of these characters smoke cigars outside of combat? Yeah, Fearing seems like he might. He's always they, talking about bars. I could totally see that. They, uh, all these characters could smoke. Yeah, I could see it. Like anyone who's Cyrus, in the past, Cyrus, Cyrus like they even smoke. posed like because the. Because the sprites are so like tiny, sixteen bit. When he's holding a book out there, and same with Tressa, like it looks like they're holding pipes. Yeah, it's anyone weird. from the past looks like they could smoke, in my opinion. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> even like doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so these are actually these actually are the strongest characters in my party because yep. I forgot I leveled up when I fought that random little thing. But I'm gonna rest just so that I have, um, you know, everything's filled up. Okay. When I get when I go into this <laughs> dungeon, I'm under level four. So if I die, that's gonna be it. And then I do have a bunch of healing items. And this game is, uh, you know, save at checkpoints, but the checkpoints are pretty generous. There's like one in each area, yeah. and it's not a, at least one. There's usually two in dungeons, and it's uh, and even like the random encounters I find to be not super um, like well. uh, aggravating. Yeah, um, you, know, you can make you can choose to make them more likely if you run, or um, and also Cyrus, Cyrus has a passive is, skill that just yeah. uh, gives you fewer random encounters. Yeah, so it's pretty manageable, even though random encounters in general are bad, but. I would like to propose that any old-timey, like, fantasy character who smokes should be deemed a Gandalf. Um, okay, so when I first got here, um, it gave me the option to trigger the, um, the next, the next, like, actual story part, but I chose not to. Oh, if you don't, I think you need to actually find the bar in here. Okay. Right, we have well, a question, though. Is there any sort of uh, auto-win mechanic for random encounters, if you're, say, like, really over leveled? Oh, I, um, not that I've seen. Not no. really, but like if you are really over leveled, then the fights are going to be really, really fast. I mean, yeah, as we just saw in that. Because um... most fights, like if you've reached the mash A to win point, that's going to go way, way faster than the majority of fights where you actually need to use strategy. Try going north, because uh, like in the other zone. Cause okay. The town's also more than one zone, which is uh, can make them a bit. I'm just used sprawling. to all the important buildings, so like all the like kind of recurring buildings will be in the same spot, but you're right. It yep. could be. Upstream. Upstream color. Did you see that movie? No. What's it about? It's uh, about pigs that are filled with um, like mind control worms that they make flowers out of. It's from the director of Primer, if you know what that is. I did not know that he made another movie. Yeah, huh. it's definitely uh, something. Because, oh, because God, this game's just so fucking gorgeous. <laughs> like, look at this. It does look great. Yeah. And the light is, the light and water effects are far better than any of the sprite work. Like, the sprite work's great, but like, this is like, 
the lighting and water technology is 20 years ahead of what we're looking at. Yeah. Like the focus. So it, it's such a weird effect. It's an Unreal Engine 4. So there's yeah. that. Um, all right, so let's start Ophelia, who some people think is like the actual main character of this game. Uh, maybe because uh, her name's at the start of Octopath. But I, uh, I don't think there is a main character. That's the one thing that I've been like going through. That all they all have their stories to go through, and they might come together in some way. But by chapter four, they still are doing their own thing. So there might be a convergence, but I haven't hit it yet. Thirty hours in, and that's telling. That means like a lot, if not a the lot. vast majority yeah. of the game, is it being disconnected like that. Yep. I think it's fine. But that's it's just interesting. A, it's just it's an expectation to have going in. Yeah. Uh, so if you're expecting like sort of the singular quest through the land to save things. It's more like, no, these are eight different stories. So uh, this character, she's like the Pope's daughter, right? Or yep. the Pope's like adopted daughter. Yeah, the Archbishop's daughter, I yeah. think is the Pope. Is, is, have you seen the Pope yet? Like, because I, I have a feeling that the reason he, he, she is the Archbishop's daughter is because the Pope is going to be a boss. Right, I, I just feel like her lore seems like it's tied into whatever like the actual story is. Cause I remember I was just, like, her, her story had the whole like, story about how the continent was even like created and stuff like all oh, the gods they th they were mad yeah but that's they pretty sure much were mad but it, but her whole thing is just a religious pilgrimage and the well, spots she's been to so far are kind of just like okay she does the thing and then moves on and like she has sort of a, a, a character a character esque type you know it, it, save a kid from a thing and like learn a lesson and doesn't actually deal with the point of the pilgrimage so i think it might be kind of Thematic, but things like uh, Theria needs to collect these items, Tressa's looking for a treasure, Cyrus is looking for this book that is basically the Necronomicon that yeah. was stolen years ago. And I think they are all sort of coming together in some bad stuff, which uh, I actually hope it does have some convergence because otherwise it'll it'll just feel it'll feel very weird. The game feels weird for a JRPG with it how it's structured. Weird. weird for a JRPG is quite a sentence. Well, because with the JRPG, you expect a certain sense of linearity and pacing, even when the even when you are mechanically functioning non-linearly in, say, like Final Fantasy XII, uh, you still have this story you are going through and hitting points of the story. Maybe that's why I like this one, then, that sort Probably. of open-endedness. Like, to me, like, what's cool about RPGs is that you're playing a role. Like, you should have a lot of like, agency in what the characters are like and what are they, what are they doing in any given time. That's why I like Skyrim or yeah. like Xenoblade Chronicles X. Whereas I feel like a lot of JRPGs are just like, I'm just playing like an action game like slowly, like pretty you know? much, yeah. So I don't, yeah. And also, like uh, Skyrim and Xenoblade Chronicles X, another JRPG, mm -hmm. um, it is it doesn't gatekeep of where you can go. Mostly, there yeah. are there are there are little uh, event dungeons where you need to be in the active chapter to unlock them. But otherwise, you can go anywhere in the map, and the thing that gates you is the difficulty of the monsters. And it'll say, this is, you know, you're going to meet level 45 monsters here, so if you're level 15, you're dead. Yeah, but even in the beginning, too, it's pretty good about, like, scaling areas to where you're at, yeah. at least. Um, for, like, you know, when, if you do, like, the first couple characters' story, and then when you do the next characters, they'll be, like, higher at level than they would have been viewed in a different order. Yeah. So. Cool. Any questions or anything, Pete? I was wondering whether you can rename the characters. No. No. Because also there's voice, because there's voice acting, and they say their name. So. Yep. See. To you, I offer my soul and my blood. That is dire. This game's like weirdly like mature too, and some of the stuff. Like all the, all the primrose, he's like he's like a courtesan. Yeah. yeah. No, she's like straight up more than that. Yeah. And she's on, she's on a roaring rampage of revenge. Yeah. It's it's like a it's like a medieval remake of like a spit on your grave. Yes. Yeah. And then you have like Cyrus, where he's just like, oh, you know, the, the wacky, befuddled professor who is just trying to find a book. Yeah, that's, that's quite an anime man. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, Cyrus, why don't you notice how your students want to bang you? I'm too interested in the knowledge. Wow. Is that, is that a hero academia? Is no. Cyrus your hero academia? No, it's actually straight up that's Cyrus's thing. I know, but I'm saying. I'm saying. I don't know. I'm Come trying to meet you where you live. That. No. You're wearing a Snorlax outfit. I know, I, I know. And by the way, my hero academia is real good. It's taking all my professionalism to even be able to look at you right now. <laughs> That's how much I respect you. But I'm anyway, Boku no Hero Academia is a really good shonen anime that, okay, it follows the tropes normally, but it's just the, the characterization's really strong. You can, there's a lot more sympathy. There's not just a blunt, dumb crap like. You know, the Sasuke is actually uh, a character who people go like, oh, this guy's a psycho. So we, 
Oh, I haven't seen this yet. Uh, so I'll say a weird thing about this game that we're actually playing right now yep. um, is that when you're on these character quests, it's pretty much just treating it as if that character is the only one there. Like Yes, it is very, very... That's what the biggest thing that makes it feel weird. Yeah, but this travel banter stuff, um, I'm not... Uh, what? Oh, plus, plus start. Stuff. Now listen here. This is very uh, Tales of Fantasia, or ta ta any Tales game, where you have this thing where while you're going, you can hit these little, uh, you know, just exchanges between your party members. I've heard this game compared to so many JRPGs, I just don't know what or care what they are. Oh, it's yeah. like, it's like Bravely Default and like Final Fantasy Warriors of Life. It's like Saga Frontier. It's like Live a Life or Live a Live. It's like whatever the hell yeah. you just said. Um, so it's just weird being reminded that this genre has so much like there's a lot there's a lot that could be like yeah so but it, it is very bizarre that like this ex this type of exchange is kind of the only place you see your party members interacting outside of just like following and being a battle party otherwise each story is that character's story yeah and it has their own NPCs and their own like you know characters and players who are doing things but the rest of your party is not actually involved except just backing you up when fighting. Which again, I don't think is a f necessarily a flaw, but no, it's, it's just a weird. weird thing to be aware of when you're playing a game called Octopath Traveler. Hey, famous Nero Tomata character, Emil. Let's talk about that again for 40 minutes. Yes, let's! <laughs> you're kidding, right? Yeah, yeah, no, let's just, let's just, there's some dead air, <laughs> like, take the lead. <laughs> no, because let's, you know, listen to these... There's actually a chance one of these characters is Emil's voice actor. I said I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're right. <laughs> and what's going on here? So I feel as she, she's up, very much about mediating. Peace. Yes. Yeah. And like, she already did the thing she needs to do for her pilgrimage here. She lit the flame because that's a, uh, whether it's a religious rite or, a, or, or preventing the apocalypse is a JRPG, so I mean, it's difference? probably both. Uh, so she did that thing already, but she hasn't done any fighting or gone to a dungeon yet. So she needs a justification for that as part of her chapter. So let's deal with these crappy kids and their problems. So that kid's sad, and that make, it's making another kid sad. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm reflectively skipping through all this. I just, I just cannot help myself. No, you can actually, uh, if we can even like get to the like hold B to like get through it and. I can just explain what happened with this, because I did play through it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that crap kid lost the other crap kid's brooch, and the uh, brooch belonged to his mom, and his mom died, so it made him really pissed off. Brooch? Brooch. Brooch? Brooch. Doesn't it pronounce it's, it's, it's brooch. I thought it was brooch, but I don't know if there's one of those regional words. <laughs> okay. Possible. Anyway. Well, I'm from Utica. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's an Albany expression. Oh, okay. Uh, so all this stuff, they're looking for the brooch, and I'm gonna keep saying it. Uh, it turns out like a dog stole it, and the dog runs into the woods, and the kid goes after it, and the woods are dangerous, and there are monsters there, so Ophelia has to run to the rescue, and oh, then you, okay. you huh. do a combat. You see. Oh, I thought they were gonna say the whole sentence there. Yeah, okay, so let's, and, get, let's, get to, let's get to it. <laughs> and this is also that JRPG like voice acting thing of um, some lines are going to be fully voice acted, but very few and most are going to be like, they say a short phrase that is kind of the message of, this is kind of the start of the sentence that they're saying in text, but then it just trails off and you have to read the rest. Just look at the way the buildings like come in and out of focus, like when you go down and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Question. Just to uh, settle that earlier matter. So it, it is spelled B-R-O-O-C-H, but it's uh, pronounced brooch. Okay. I remember a Tim and Eric bit about a brooch for men that was called the bro oach. <laughs> but I don't know if that was poisoning my mind about because bro is you know bro is that, but I know if that was the same thing. Mimi wants a bro oach is what they said at the end of that. Um, all right, so I need to get out and tell you. The way I feel about Tim and Eric is probably the way you feel about JRPGs. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Like Tom goes to the mayor is great. But the rest of it, I just can't stand. <laughs> That's funny, because Tom goes to the mayor is the one thing of theirs I don't really care about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if I'm going the right way here. I do sometimes get a little... Oh, no, that's it. Well, the green. Just follow the green. Yeah, but I don't always know where if I'm going the right... Um, it's not... Yeah, there's like still like roads and stuff to follow. But. There are, but actually the... Because um, you don't have a map, you have this little radar that just shows points of interest. Yeah. So just go north. I think you need to go into the uh, that house. 
This house. Yep. Okay. Oh, this might be just the house. Or, yeah. See? He's there. Hey, there's some. You can steal this crap while you're at it. So yeah, the you know, crap kid one ran off to the woods, and uh, he freaks out because, you know, the woods are dangerous, and then they learn the magic of friendship. But first, you have to save them from a dog. And like roughly, this is like the the ratio of like plot and like town stuff yeah, to combat, it's as, as you'll that. see in like the actual game. There's a demo of this game that I think is a really good demo, and that it gives you a real like long sense of what the game is like. Yeah. So it's straight up like the first chapter hey. or two. It's like three hours. You can do whatever yep. you can do in three hours. So. Even the first demo is like the fir is uh, Primrose's first chapter, and yeah. it, that's that's kind of the game structurally. Yeah. So if you're on the fence or whatever, like that's something you can you should play that. Yep. <clears throat> I've. I, Primrose is a character who, like, you know, she she's sort of a bard, she buffs, she has some dark attacks, she uses a dagger. That's handy, but even, like, with similar levels and good equipment, she just is so not useful in combat, and I like her. I, I find her story the most interesting, but she's the hardest to keep in my party. And her, like, her like starting area, I think, is one of the most It's really stunning. compelling, like, yeah. That one and that pirate area for Tressa. Hmm. Again, like just like seeing what, how they render these new, these kind of like you know JRPG kind of staple areas, like oh, big cathedral or like yeah. a pirate town. But just seeing how those are rendered in this art style, I think is like a big part of the appeal for me. Seeing it in three D is like, yeah, I, w I would love to just see more games like this. Not it, not with the same you know palette or the same total style. Like ch change the sprites, but just do the thing where you have the sprites in the three D space. That's really cool. Because it looks like somebody's like weird like artsy like like film project or something. Yeah, for like they're like. You know, they're like they're like pretentious machinima or something. Or a papercraft diorama. Yeah. It also reminds me a lot of 3D Dot Game Heroes, the uh, famous sum from software joint. So yeah, so a lot of these uh, talent sections will require you you use uh, that character's like the like the lead character's path action. Mm -hmm. So I have to. Um, you have to guide him. Yeah. So get on board. Sorry, townsperson. His name's Daryl. Daryl. So yeah, this is the good girl version of Primrose's yep. allure, all these thirsty gentlemen. There are many thirsty gentlemen. Yeah. She lives in the desert. They all just want to drink. Hmm. Except explicitly. It's like, <laughs> like in terms of the mature writing, they, they don't pull punches with these, these situations happening with a few of the characters. And it's actually really cool. Yeah. Any uh, questions, anything, comments? Yeah. Like, cool isn't the best word, but like, it's nice to see. Did you mention how far into the game you are right now, like or like percentage-wise? Uh, I've done, so I believe it's four chapters per character. Yep. I think I've read that. So if I've done the first of all, I'm about 25% into the game. If, yeah. And I'm about 75% in, but again, I'm still wondering if there is a Bravely Default-esque, you know, a turn, or if there's just going to be a convergence, like here's a chapter five, which would make a lot of sense, and would be kind of weird if it isn't there. But if it isn't, I'll, I'll find out soon, hopefully. I would love to see just other kinds of games like this. Like the, yeah. the the dream I had, which is not happening. Imagine if that's how, imagine if this is how they chose to bring back like Earthbound. Like not oh, like a new game because they can't do a new game, but like it's like we get it. It's been we can't just put out a GBA game in America. So what if we just remade it like this, and then it was a new thing for both Japan and the first time in America. That would be three. incredible. That'd be so good. What about having like Mega Man in a 3D space, but it's like this? Oh, that'd be great too. Yeah. Although Mega Man 11 looks pretty good. No, yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, Tony has a write up on geek.com, and I have a preview for it on PC Meg. I'm really excited about Mega Man 11. But before that, I'm really excited about getting uh, Mega Man uh, X Collection. Mega Man That's X Collection. Pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. 24th. I hope we can get back to uh, fighting some monsters again. Because I do think the combat in this game is really good. Yeah. Like, it's just like satisfying in its own right. I just give this crap. Watch it for yourself. You, you don't need yeah. It. yeah, it's a, you know, spoilers. I love having that button, and I like that it's, you need to hold it long enough that you're not going to accidentally skip things. Yeah. But it's there to skip stuff really fast. Uh, let's see here. Number six. And that's the kind of stuff that ends up just killing JRPGs for me, is just, I just get bored with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. You can also press plus to hear travel banter. Yeah. Again, like I'm bored with that kind of stuff. Because that didn't really give us any benefits, right? It was just kind of some more character detail. Yeah, it's just characterizations. But you, you see sort of a dynamic, and that's the, is really the only significant way you see the main characters interact in any way. Yeah. 
Uh, occasionally, a character not in your party will appear in the bar and you can just like talk to them like an NPC, but that's it. <laughs> and path actions don't work for them. Uh, this is going to be another pretty spicy fight. Since, um... Okay. Yep. I should have gotten Cyrus. Yeah. He's my main. He's good. Yeah. Okay, let's... Um... I'm just going to have to experiment and see if we figure out what this thing's vulnerable to. Yep. Also, I think these lizards have like really high evasion too. Oh. Just attack or you know, use everything. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Well, well, then I have to attack. Oh, okay. Hey. There we go. Nailed it. And good, Haunted has an axe too, so that'll be good. Um, let's uh, use an. Uh, let's heal myself here. Good idea. I don't want to and then boost Hana to just hit, yeah. whack it four times with an axe. Nice. Yeah, these uh, evade a lot. <laughs> Bastard. Okay. It's amazing. Um, I mean, I know it's not going to do, it's not going to be the thing, but yeah. it's just a good attack. Yeah, it might do something. It's nice. That's very little. A uh, nice thing is that when their uh, armor is down, oh. you get some pretty significant damage from whatever you use. Like, the, the vulnerabilities are specifically for taking the armor do down. And then you can sort of just go all out with your strongest attacks. Oh god, okay. I want to just keep all my, my boys alive here. Yeah. Also, like, you have, two, you have Alphen and Ophelia, and they can both heal. Have you used any concoctions with Alphen? Uh, no, I don't use Alphen a whole lot. I just uh, use him, I, had to, I want to use his path action. Okay. Because his concoctions, you basically combine two things to make like a healing item that can affect everyone. So if you get uh, Soothing Dust and combine it with Essence of Grip, you basically have a heal all. See, I'm not about like crafting stuff in games. No, it's not crafting. It is it is a skill. Like you only use it in the in, in But like battle. just like consumables and stuff though, right? It's still like, yeah. Yeah, I just like more physical characters. That's just like. That's fine. Yeah. Question. Have you talked about who these developers are? Like, have they done anything before? Uh, it's not really the default team. It's a choir who did Tenchu back in the day. Right. Um, but I thought I thought some of the uh, some of the devs were like from Bravely Default. I think I think you're right. Um, I would need to look that up, and I do not have my phone on me. Also, we are streaming right now, so I can't. Yeah. But yeah, it's not. That's not that. If you want to find it's out, it's not that studio. <laughs> No, it's um, not the studio, but it, it definitely feels like some of the same people involved are, have made this game. Yeah. It is very much that. So you also played uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Have you liked that? It's good. I mean, it's, like, it's, part of the, it's a port of the Wii U game, but um, it's a good Wii U game. Um, I just wish that the new stuff that's in it... Um, the, uh, you can just Mar access. Yeah, you have, to play, you have to play the whole game to get to that, which is like, I'm not about that, but... Question. It sounds like the producers uh, previously headed the Bravely series, and then, the yeah, producers. it has a choir was chosen because of their work on, what did I do to deserve this, my lord? Oh, that's a, this <laughs> oh, is yeah. the, the Sky spinoff, right? Uh, it was made by Nice. I don't think it's a direct Sky, uh, Disguise spinoff, but it was made by Nippon HE America. Oh, I'm thinking of that Nippon printy, software. those printy game. No, right? that is... Uh, uh, do I really have to be the hero dude? That's something I'm thinking of, yeah. Uh, what I do to deserve this is more of sort of like a, um, kind of a JRPG Dig Dug. Okay. I would just play a JRPG of Dig Dug. Well, it's all, more, it's, all Dig Dug's dumb family stuff? Well, it's, more, you, it's more like if if a JRPG had Dig Dug mechanics. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, unless, unless it actually is the printing game, because there are also a lot of Japanese games that have that, like, it's a whole sentence. I'm really Especially uh, NIS games. I'm really, uh... Yep. Yeah, this uh, gecko is taking forever. Yeah. But, like, I have to, like, think about <clears throat> it. Like, I'm, make, I'm not just, like... Yeah, there's a lot to, to think about. Yep. Uh, one thing that I've noticed when uh, equipping my characters, Optimize is good for the main stuff, but it doesn't touch the accessories, and you can get accessories that really boost some things like accuracy. And that is very helpful. That would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Ah, there we go. I think when uh, there we go. I think if you can have Ulbrich do another another full boosted uh, like his powerful sword attack, it'll probably work. Yeah, I'm gonna use just a really powerful spell here too. That works too. Um, but she doesn't have any uh, points. 
Ooh, take aim, then they'll all hopefully hit That's more. A good point. Yeah. yeah. But maybe once, if I don't kill it in this turn, so that I can use it for breaking the guard again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's not going to miss. Yeah. I'm, 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 I also I don't say, know how much it buffs it, so. Yeah, I would say that for when I'm trying to break the guard again. I think that's what I was going for, but whatever. Yes. Uh, I like that one of his skills is amputation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's rough out of here. Blast with uh, some light now that his stuff's down. Okay, it wasn't very effective. Yeah. <clears throat> but if Ulbrich nails his uh, special attack, should do it. Cross strike is real good. Ah, wow. Again, though, remember, are you under level? I am under level here, and now my boy is dead. Um, I think there's a clay for reviving, though. Yep. Yeah. It's a lot of points, though. It's 50. Yeah, I might just use an item. I have a bunch of... An olive of life. Yeah. This is very, um, again, like Tails, where there's apple gel and orange gel that are the healing items. With this, it is an inspire, inspiriting plum and energizing pomegranate. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe I'll, like... I think not. Because I think yeah, when you boost that, I think he mm -hmm. takes um, other people's. Um, that might work. Okay. So let's Maybe. See. Let's see how this, how this goes. And also, if you boost the uh, buffs and debuffs, they just last longer. Which yeah. Is super useful. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do here. I need to sort of heal. Use this. Yeah, this, this enemy is a particular pain because he doesn't have an elemental uh, weakness to exploit. Which make they 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 hit way more often like they miss less than the weapon attacks especially for a really fast character like this yeah so that's why I'm also trying to boost BP so I just get more yep. ch chances to go at them and if you want to boost BP manually there is the uh, uh, energy oh you don't do you have any no the energizing pomegranate just gives you BP points Why not I might have just run out sounds like I have I I haven't been focused on buying them so yeah so um, I will then I will heal. I'll just heal all those. Yeah, heal. Pete, you oh. think, Pete, you think you're gonna get this game? You know, I played through the demo. I don't, I don't really think unless I hear something really good about, you know, the end game of it. It just th there's not enough for me of like a hook that like makes it more than nostalgia for me. I guess. That's fine, and if there was something really good for the end game, I wouldn't even recommend it because I refuse to be a hypocrite with my attitude towards Final Fantasy XIII. I'm enjoying the game so, like, as I've been playing, so 30 hours in, if it, there's a big change that makes it even better, that's great, but I still won't forget Final Fantasy XIII for 35 hours in, and I'm still going down hallways. Yes, I know it opens up once you get to Pulse, shut up. Final Fantasy XIII stands, uh, if you, you know, have any opinions or wanna bash me, Comment. We'll answer him. Mm. Don't let a man in a Snorlax suit insult the things you like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying to just like think. Of, yeah. Um, you could also just coward out. Leap. Nah, I think I'm, I'm too deep in it now. Sunken costs. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just have so many healing items too that I can just sort of like just yeah. brute force it. It just be expensive for me. It just takes a long time. Yeah. Uh, heal more to everyone. You like the Mega Man X games, right? Which one yeah. did you play? Uh, X. That's it. Okay. Uh, two wasn't as strong as X, but still real good. Three is real good. Uh, four is, I think, one of the best. And five is really good, but super hard. Six is also not bad. Seven is the only one that's a complete garbage fire. Because they started becoming polygonal, right? Once they got on like PS seven, seven, seven. yeah. And but eight, like it was still polygonal, but it went back to like feeling more like X. When seven, just it felt wrong. The mechanics changed. It wasn't good. Mm. Yeah, because moving that, making those games three uh, polygonal seems like it's a, a big step that they maybe weren't. Yeah. Uh, ready, ready for. It. There we go. That take aim is really helping. But it is nice to see that after uh, you know. <laughs> After seeing the reception to Mighty Number no. Nine, Capcom was like, "Okay, this is what we should do." Got him. Eleven. Ah, so that was a really good fight. Like, yeah. I think it showed off a lot of the mechanics and just like the. It only took twenty minutes. I, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. you'll do great against the boss of this. Right, but like I know, like, 
again, that, yeah. that's like going through, I went through a few more of those, by the time I actually reached the boss, I might be like, in a better spot. Yeah, but, yeah. and uh, you know, grinding isn't terrible because once you, the, the balance for getting experience from enemies is actually pretty good. Like, mm -hmm. if you are facing an enemy that gives you good experience, you're, you at least have a chance against it with your tactical options, unless it is wildly overleveled, in which case don't fight it for experience. But like, if you're fighting an enemy around your level, you're going to be growing. I'm gonna Another question. I'm going to warp back to, uh, I just want to show off how uh, Primrose's Hilaria looks. All right. Go ahead that question. Um, I don't know if this spoils anything. So is it, uh, do you have to keep like more than like just one party of characters like leveled up? Like is it, is it the, that, that, is that sort thing. of Final Fantasy VI yeah, stuff? Yeah, you do. Yes, yeah. but you can carry pretty easily. So like if you have one strong character who can do like an attack all and has good speed, just dump your crappy characters into a party, wander around for like 20 minutes, you'll have them up to speed. Right, but yeah, you do need to do that. Cause also, cause you need that character to do their next chapter. Yep. And you do need to do like all the character chapters, I think to like level up in a way that's like not yes. just really grindy boring. So uh, we talk about the job point system? Uh, no, it is, I mentioned it, but okay. yeah, you can teach uh, Alfin another skill. He has three to select. And once you get all of the skills he can get for you know, his status right now, you can get that question mark, which is his special skill that has to be full boosted. Yeah, I can't, <clears> yeah, because I need to get these other ones first. Uh, and poison can be quite nice because poison is fairly powerful. Uh, and you also unlock the support, support skills, skills, which you should be equipping. Right, and it's like a, just a passive yep. uh, buff. So Hale and Hardy is straight up just increase maximum HP. Oh, that That's would really real use, good. That would be really useful like two minutes ago. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, who else do we got? Uh, oh, okay, I feel like you get it. Yeah, the veils I haven't used a whole lot. Uh, and yeah, uh, she yeah. just does yeah. the same thing. It's the, it's the same structure uh, of these skills. And Evil Ward, I think, is actually a pretty good skill. Let's find out what it does. Increase the party success rate when attempting to flee. Okay. That's Again, helpful. would have been pretty useful in that last one, so yeah. Way to coward. Yeah. How's the equipment? Like, do you have any uh, new accessories you can get? Um, everyone has stuff. On. Oh no, Alvin doesn't. Because um. also getting uh, keeping equipment up, which uh, is fairly easy to do, especially if you just keep Therian in your party and steal everything from everyone, uh, you can get pretty good equipment. But yeah, I mean, I spent all my money on like healing items. So, right. Yeah. yeah. So I have, you know, I did, I did, I did upgrade some of their equipment. But yeah, I don't have. Because that. That is the biggest factor in increasing your uh, how much damage you do and how much damage you take. Yeah, I mean, let's see um, if there's anything interesting to buy in this town. Sure. Um, and it's cool when you when you see it, it'll say what it'll change for that character, which is yep. really uh, useful. It's a it's a clean menu. It gives you like, it tells you what you want to know. Like, what does it make the number go up or down? Like, yep. Yeah. That's what makes it clean. Like, it's nice that this is just showing you everything. You can just go through it. Question. Does this ha game have a sort of edgelord shadow equivalent where he just like speaks in ellipses? Uh, I think Therian is kind of the closest one where he's just like kind of grumpy because his old partner betrayed him. But even then, it's not really edgelord. It's just like, yeah, I'm not really looking for friends that much. <laughs> okay. Now, certainly there are like some villain characters who get edgelord and stupid, but not, uh, not, not even a whole lot. A few, but not for the main party. Who's your favorite edge lord in the game? Um, uh, maybe Adon from Street Fighter. Hmm? He's good. He's a pretty edgy boy. He is. Um, I think it's. Uh, I still gotta go with Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, he's, he's, he's good. He's just bad though. Like, yeah, <laughs> edge lords aren't good. But like, he's not even like fun. He's just bad. He just mm. sucks. Like, I get. I derive no pleasure, sincere or ironic, from him. Like, what about death from um, uh, Darksiders? Oh, what? death from Darksiders 2. Darksiders yeah, 2, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good one. They're putting that out, because like, Darksiders 3 is coming out yeah. at the end of this year. Which is amazing to yeah, me. Yeah, they, they kept doing it. Um, it's like, there's really like a weird way to me, like the Chronicles of Narnia of video games. Like, yeah. it's, like that they managed to make three of those Narnia movies and they're still just chugging along with them. Like, yeah. Despite all the weird changing of hands and like, uh, Disney produced two of them and blah, 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 but. I'm kind yeah. of amazed they haven't gone like, I'm kind of amazed like Netflix or Hulu hasn't just picked it up and said like, okay, we'll do something with less budget, but it'll be fun. I mean, we'll, I mean, there's like four more books left, so. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm just gonna pick a fight, because why not? Also, if you're not like at a, you can only interact with people who have the bubbles over their heads. So, like, if they're just standing there, they might as well be rocks. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for a pensive mother to taste my blade. <laughs> Look at this, she's ready to fight. She was even begging you to have mercy. Yeah. <laughs> you're a monster. <laughs> 420. <laughs> Okay, it's not going to get any better than that. Yeah, we're um, done. <laughs> Octopath Traveler, it's uh, available now on Nintendo Switch. Uh, you can read coverage of it uh, on, on the site. There is one thing I want to think about with the game, though, that has been bugging me. Sure. The name. Octopath Traveler, like I'm 30 hours in, I'm in way further than you. I don't really get, so I'm hoping that that's that uh, item in the menu system. I'm really hoping that it, I'll, I just want the power to control cephalopods with my mind. I see what you did there. Cool. Uh, We're done. It's out now. Um, if you're in New York tomorrow, Saturday, um, come on by to the Game Devs of Color Expo at the Schomburg Center in Harlem. I'll be there giving a talk about being a person of color online. So I'll be great. Um, we got some cool games to check out and other speakers and whatnot. So uh, yeah, that's us uh, tomorrow. I'll be there too, but I won't be wearing this. Yeah, that's yep. Just Although I might if you dare. Our be. culture is on the costume well. Hmm? So, uh, but yeah, check that out. Well, are you saying Snorlax is appropriating you? Not me, but somebody. You said, uh, you said R's. The general, the general R. I'll be back next week. I have on my notes PC building simulator. Is that what we wanted to do next week? I want I want us to look at it at some point. Okay. I haven't even touched it yet, but it is it's what it sounds like, and I'm curious. Okay, so it might be that. Or but for that, some... we'll need someone from hardware. So yeah. hopefully, when Matt Buzzy's here, so it'll be that or something else. But we'll be something. So uh, so thanks. <laughs>